So hello everyone, in this video we're going to solve another DP question based upon strings and it's called count binary strings, right? So let's look at the object of the question which are these two lines over here. Let's take this to the page and if we read them out, it says that you are given a number n and you are required to print the number of binary strings of length n with no consecutive zeros, right? So what does the question mean? What does the question mean? It says that we have to print the number of binary strings that are possible of size n which would be the input that says that they have no consecutive zeros to understand this a bit better let's take a sample input case right so let's suppose for input i have n equal into 3 right so i have to give the number of possible binary strings with no consecutive zeros let's take the first step and let's write all the binary strings that are possible of length 3 so the very first binary string would be 0, 0, 0. Then it would be 0, 0, 1. Then it would be 0, 1, 0. Then 0, 1, 1. And then 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And 1, 1, and 1. Right? So these are all the binary strings that are possible of length 3. This uh, accounts for a total number of 8, which is nothing but 2 to the power 3. And it's because... Uh, at each and every step, at each and every length, I'm getting two options. Either I can have zero or one. So uh, two options are zero or one. And henceforth, if I give them three times the option of two, I would get a total of eight, which are the number of binary strings that are possible, right? So out of these binary strings, out of these binary strings, what are the strings in which there are consecutive zeros? Those won't account for my answer in this question, right? Because we don't want consecutive zeros. Okay. So the very first thing that we have over here, this cannot be my answer because it has three consecutive zeros. Then the second string also, it has uh, two consecutive zeros. And then this one doesn't have any consecutive zeros, right? So it's zero, one, and then zero. So two single zeros separated out. In between, there's a one. Over here too, the entire string only contains a single zero. Then over here, if you see, there are two consecutive zeros. So again, this won't be the part of our answer. And then if we look at last three over here too, we don't have any consecutive zeros. So the answer, the answer to the particular test case would be one, two, three, four, five. So answer would be five. As there are five binary strings that are possible, which don't have consecutive zeros. Right. I hope the question is uh, clear now. And I would wish that you try it out on your own and uh, jump on the solution video after some time right so let's discuss the solution now let's discuss the solution again uh, as as it is a dp question uh, there are two approaches to the question right so the very first approach would be recursive approach discuss about the recursive approach and after discussing the recursive approach we would apply the same idea behind the recursive uh, approach to the tabulation that we would create in dp right so in recursive, in, uh, in recursion, the simple funda of uh, include and exclude is something that we would be using, right? So at every step, at every length, I would give my string two options that the next uh, digit can either be a zero or a one. Of course, there would be a condition over here. And the condition would be that if my previous digit is already a zero, I cannot have another zero. If my previous digit is a zero, I can only have one. So let's let's uh, write what I'm trying to say. So let's suppose this is my length, and over here I write my last digit, right? So let's suppose uh, my length, uh, the my current string is uh, of course empty. My length at the starting for n equals to three would be three, and my last is let's suppose minus one for now, right? Because my string is empty, so I don't, I don't have any last number. So for the very first call, I would have two options, zero and one. As there is no last digit, I can place both zero and one, right? That would give me zero. Now the length that I want is two because I already have a string of length one. I would just want two more bits to continue, uh, to complete my binary string, right? And my previous is now zero. Okay. Now for the call of one, I would have my digit as one, right? This is my digit and i would have my length as two and my previous digit as one again over here if you see now that we have our previous digit over here i would look at my previous digit and if my pre previous digit is zero 
I cannot have another zero because the question says that they cannot be consecutive zeros. That's not allowed. So if I have my last digit as zero, I only have one option. And that one option is that I add a single digit one after my zeros, after all the strings that I have created, right? So over here, I would call for one because zero is not allowed. I would have zero one as my string, one length that's remaining, and my previous would become one, right? Again, from over here, now my last digit is one. As soon as my last digit becomes one, after one, I can apply both zero and one, right? Because I can have consecutive ones, that is allowed. Consecutive zero is just something that's not allowed. So over here, if we see, as my last digit is one, I can make calls for zero and one both. So I would get zero, one, zero. The remaining length is zero. And as soon as the remaining length becomes zero, we just print this out, right? So this would be my first answer. Then it's zero, one, and one again. So zero, one, one, and the length becomes zero. So this would be my another string. Right? So this tree is complete. This, this subtree is complete in recursion. Let's talk about this tree, okay? So we have last digit as one, uh, zero and one is the options that we have. Then one zero becomes over here and then one, one length zero. Over here it becomes one one, with one length and one previous. Over here I can only call for one now. As the last digit is zero, I can only call for one. So I get zero, one, one zero one with zero and of course one over here. But as the length becomes zero, this would be my answer. From this point, I have two options, zero and one, as my last digit is one. So I would get one, one, zero from this end, and one, one, one from this end, right? So this is the recursive approach. What we are doing is we are including and excluding, right? We, we are getting two choices, right? Uh, either one can be included or excluded. And if one is excluded, I would add zero, right? And uh, the condition in recursion is just that if the previous digit if the previous digit in the string is zero, I can only add one, right? And this gives me the answer. So if we look over here, these are the strings. These are the exact strings that we had over here, right? Okay, so now that the recursive approach has been discussed, let's talk about the time complexity. Of course, at every given step, we are getting two options. So the time complexity would be two to the power n. We have done similar kind of recursive questions in previous uh, videos and the time, time complexity over there also was two to the power n. Of course, it would have some conditions which would, which would save some time, but, but of course the call would be made. Right? So this is uh, henceforth really, really expensive. It's an exponential function. So let's jump directly onto dp now. Right? Uh, remember what we did was when there was zero as last digit, we only called for one. And when there was one as the last digit, we could call for zero and one both, right? So the same idea we would apply in DP and see how we can uh, approach it with DP and get a better solution out of it, right? So the very first thing in DP that we do is uh, assign storage, right? So we assign storage and meaning to the storage, of course. So, and the second step that we do is we recognize the direction and the third step and the last step is to traverse and solve, right? So talking about the very first step, now we have to assign storage. Okay, so in DP, I would say, I would take two 2D, 2D arrays, right? Two 2D arrays of size n plus one, right? Let's see why. The why and how would become much, much clearer after we have completed the third step of db which is traversing and solving right so as we had n equal into three that means the size of this array would be a four right so i would write over here that size is n plus one and for an array of size four the indexes vary from zero to three so we have indices like zero one two right again over here zero one two and three Right, and if I draw conditions, this would be it, this would be it, this would be it, and then this would be it. Let's erase the extra portion from over here, right? So, 
this is the dp array that we have now i would name these arrays as dp of 0 and dp of 1 right this was this was the step of assigning storage now what is the meaning of this these storages right so in dp of 0 at index 1 what does this mean so dp of 0 at index 1 means the number of strings that are possible binary strings that are possible of length 1 such that there are no consecutive zeros so whatever the question says the number of digits the number of digits that are possible the number of binary digits that are possible which have no consecutive zeros and is of length of the index right so if we talk about dp of 1 of 2 dp of 1 of 2 would simply mean num number of binary strings that are possible of length 2 which end at 1 so that's the catch right dp of 0 would only contain all the digits all the count of the digits that end at 0 dp of 1 would contain count of digits that at, end at 1 so if there is a string 0 0 that would have 2 as size it would be over here right and if there is 0 1 it would be over I hope it's clear. I hope the meaning of DPs are clear. Again, DP of 0 of i. It's a standard, make a standard meaning. So, DP of 0 of i. This would mean the number of digits, the number of binary digits, binary strings, number of binary strings that end with 0. Of size, right? Such that there are no consecutive zeros, right? So number of binary strings that end with zero of size i. This is what dp of zero of i means. And similarly, dp of one of i means number of binary strings that end with one of size i, such that there are no consecutive zeros, right? I hope it's clear. I hope it's clear, right? So let's let's discuss now what would be the number of digits the number of digits of size 0 is there any digit of size 0 uh, is there any string of size 0 there is not so dp of 0 of 0 would remain 0 right as the size is 0 there does not exist any string at all and similarly in dp of 1 of 0 also there is no string at all right so if the size is zero it would be zero now this was our trivial case let's move on a step further right so what would be the size of strings when uh, the size uh, the number of strings when the size is one if the size is one what are the possible strings right that end with zero and end with one so i would say the only two strings that are possible in this case when size is one is either zero or one is either 0 or 1 understandable right uh, so dp of 0 would contain 1 because out of these two there is only one that ends at 0 right and dp of 1 would also contain 1 because out of these two this is the only one that ends at 1 right these were our base cases these were our trivial cases so dp of 0 would always remain 0 and dp of 0 of 1 dp of 1 of 1 would only always remain 1 because there exists only one strings each that end with 0 and 1 which are 0 and 1 itself right over here okay so this is our base case now if we see what would dp of 0 of 3 mean right dp of 0 of 3 is nothing but dp of 0 of n because n was equal to 3 n was our input right so if dp of 0 of n is something that we are talking about this would mean by the standard definition that we wrote is that the number of strings that end with 0 and have no consecutive zeros right and what would dp of 1 of n mean similarly this would mean that the num that it would be equivalent to the number of digits the number of strings that end with 1 such that there are no consecutive zeros in the string it. so my answer my answer to the question is number of digits number of strings of size n 
such that there are no consecutive zeros. Wouldn't my answer be the summation of these two? If I add the number of strings that end with zero and are of size n, and the number of strings that are that are of size n and ends with one, and if I add them both up, I would get the resultant answer that we that, that we desire in the question, right? So my answer, my answer would be addition of these two. Right, so dp of zero of n and dp of one of n. If I bo add both of them, I would get my answer to the question. Right, so it's quite evident that our answer would be on this side, and our base cases are over here. That means my direction of solving the question would be in the forward direction, would be towards the right side. Understandable, right? Because we have the answer on the rightmost point. Right. We add them bo add both of the last portions of the db and we get the answer right i hope it's clear so let's see how we can solve this now so up till now what we have discussed is the storage and the meaning and the direction in which we have to solve now let's uh, jump on to the third point which is traversing and solving now we know that these are the base cases right and uh, for dp of 0 of 2 what would be my answer? What are the number of strings that end with zero and are of size two, such that there are no consecutive zeros, right? I can only add zero, if you remember in recursion, if I had my last digit at zero, I can only add one to it. But if I had my last digit as one, I could add zero and one both to it, right? So I could only add zero I could only add zero when my last digit was one. Right? This is what we discussed over here. If we look at the recursive tree again, uh, we only added zero. We only added zero when our last digit was one. If my last digit one was one, then I added zero. If my last digit was one, then I added a zero. If my last digit was one, then I added a zero. Right? I couldn't add zero when my last digit was zero itself. Right. So when I am doing tabulation, keeping the same idea in mind, I would have zero added to all the strings of length minus one millimeter. So if I'm at length n, all the strings of length n minus one, which end at zero, I would add end at one. I would add zero to them. And this would give me the number of possible strings uh, that are there of length n, which end with zero. Again, let's iterate over this again. What I'm saying is, if I have one as my ending digit, then only I can add zero to it. I can make one zero. If I have zero in front of any string, then I cannot add zero because then it would give me consecutive zeros, which is not desired, right? So over here, if we look at this, in DP of one of one, this, this signifies the number of strings which end at one, right? So my DP of zero would be equal to, DP of zero of two would be equal to DP of one of one, right? So if I write this over here, my dp of zero of any x would be equal to dp of one of x minus one. This is what we derive. And this is similar to what we have done in the recursive tree. Okay, so let's let's iterate over this. I hope it's clear. So one would be over here as it is copied. And now if we talk about dp of one of x in the similar fashion, in the similar fashion, in the similar fashion, what we did was when I had a string, when I had a string that ended with zero, if I take a darker one, okay. If I had a string that, I, that ended with zero, I could add one to it and I could make zero and one, right? I had a string that ended with one, I could add one to it and make one one. 
right? So I could add one to both when the last digit was zero or when the last digit was one. That means that means in my DP, when I have the numbers ending at zero and one both, I can add one to both of them. So I would add this and this that makes one plus one two over. Right? So what we did over here was that DP of one of any x is equivalent to dp of 0 of x minus 1 plus dp of 1 of x minus 1. Right? This is the formula for calculating dp of 1. This is the formula for calculating dp of 0. So if we do this for the last number, what we would get is 2 goes to dp of 0. Right, as dp of x is dp of 3 and dp of 1 of x minus 1, which is 3 minus 1, is dp of 1 of 2, which is 2. So 2 comes over here, and then in dp of 1 of 3, we add both the numbers at second digit, so uh, second index. So 1 plus 2, we get 1 plus 2 as 3. Right, and, and now that our dp is completely filled, what was our answer? Our answer was addition, addition of last two digits last two digits in the last most index so 2 plus 3 which is 5 is our answer for n equals to 3 5 was our answer if you look at the recursive tree or if you look at the test case over here 5 was our answer right i hope it's clear i hope it's clear so another thing that we should observe over here is that when we are traversing and solving the number of states that we require uh, just two. We want a current state that we would fill the answers to and we want a previous state that we would fetch the answers from. Right? For dp of 2, if you look at these formulas itself, for dp of x, we just need x minus 1. Right? dp of x would need x minus 1. So, we only need one step behind. Right? The previous step is all we require. So, do we need an entire array for that? Do we need an entire array to solve for digits when we could only get, we, we only have to fetch the previous two digits, right? We don't have to. So what we can do is we can space optimize this problem. We can space optimize this problem by using variables instead of, by using variables instead of an array, right? That would move our solution from O n space complexity to O n space complexity. Right. So what we can do is we can store something. We can store the values in two variables. Let's suppose ending at zero and ending at one. And then we can use these two variables to create new ending at zero and new ending at one. And then we can assign these values back to these values and move forward. Right. That's what we were doing for this particular case. We had these old values with which we created these new values. And then we move forward and then we had these two old values with which we created these two new values and at the end of it we just added both of them and gave the answer so my answer in this case would be ea0 plus ea1 right let's try to code this let's try to code this and see if it works so over here we have our ide and the very first thing that i want to do is create a scanner object to take in the input and then we have a single input which is n so we can get this here and then what we want is two variables just two variables which are ea0 and uh, initialize with one now why are we initializing it with one we are initializing it with one if you remember our base case was when the size is one when the size is one the number of digits would be one and one each right and if we add them up we would get two which is for zero and one right so we have our base case over here so if i write this under comment this is our base case then equal to uh, zero one right so now, when we traverse, when we traverse, uh, if our base case is at one, we have to traverse from two to n, 
right we have to calculate for lens 2 to n as length of 1 is our base case which is already handled so i would have a loop which would run from 2 till n and what i want to do now is to create new variables right so as we discussed there would be a new ending at 0 right and ending at 0 would be equivalent to ending at 1 right so the previous state ending at 1 is my answer right i could only add 0 to all the digits that are ending at 1 and then we have new ending at 1 which is equivalent to ending at 0 plus ending at 1 right after assigning very uh, values to these two variables what i have to do is uh, relocate the value to the old variable so my ending at 0 would become new ending at 0 and my ending at 1 would become new ending at 1 right and after this for loop my answer would reside in ending at 0 and ending at 1 all i have to do is add them up together and i would get my desired output so uh, let's take a variable total which would have my answer which is ending at 0 plus ending at 1 right and i just have to print this now so if i print my total right this should give my answer right so on line 22 if i comment over here this is my traversing and solving portion right and in line number 23 what we are doing is adding up all the strings right so these are the three steps that we have performed let's run this and see if it works so it does we are getting 21 for our sample test case let's submit this for all the test cases so all the test cases are passing we are getting 10 out of 10 that means our solution is absolutely correct now this is the exact solution that we discussed so i don't think there is a dry that is needed if you want to dry run this again with me then you can uh, go back in the video and this is the exact dry run that we did right so there is no change in the dry run, dry run. if you want to try this question with the recursion then you can and the last thing that i want to discuss about this question is the time complexity so what would be the time complexity of this question we solved this question in just a single for loop so the time complexity was o of n right and what was the space complexity as we had discussed the space complexity that we earlier uh, had when we were discussing our previous approach using the arrays it was o of n but then we uh, used the fact that we are using only two slides at a particular time and we brought down our space complexity to o of 1 right constant space okay so i hope it was clear i hope you liked the video please like share and subscribe I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.